respectful of people's time. And uh, uh, we may have some others joining us as we get uh, underway here. I wanted to, uh, well, of course, today's session is about whiteboards. And I have a few different options for whiteboards to just kind of show off. Um, and we can talk about some of the pros and cons and some of the different ways um, we can think about using um, some of these online digital app-based whiteboard um, applications. Um, but before we jump into that, I thought uh, we might just have a little conversation about what people's interests are in the whole whiteboard topic. I mean, how do, how do you think about using whiteboard tools for your for your remote classes or your online classes for the fall yeah it is a friday afternoon isn't it <laughs> is it okay if i yeah go ahead go ahead paul thanks um i got frustrated last semester um in trying to illustrate schematically like various psychological dynamics for which I, I really need to like be able to draw certain things. And so just very simple schematics that I would usually use chalk to illustrate. Right. So chalk talk kind of uh, application. Yeah. Uh, other applications we, I mean, I've got more ideas, but I wanted to see what you, what was all on uh, your minds. Uh, yeah, I mean, basically chalk talk, but um, both synchronous and asynchronous cases are, it's useful, you know, I'm, I, I teach math, and so particularly for, for math, uh, it's useful to, so that, uh, so that you can actually slow the class down and, and, and walk them through problems step by step. Um, Yes, I think that's a good point. Uh, there are asynchronous as well as synchronous ways of using it. I mean, Paul, I assume you're talking about like in, in when you're having a session with your students to be able to sketch out things. And that would obviously be a, a synchronous use. But I mean, how many of you are familiar with like Khan Academy, where uh, there are these short package presentations? That's essentially the same kind of thing that you're you're putting together a lesson that can be viewed asynchronously. So that's that's a big option. Uh, some other things I thought of were, um, I mean, sometimes we have students uh, come up to the board in class, right? And, uh, you know, what is the option for that? Um, sometimes we have, uh, we want, students to be able to work on problems or writing or whatever individually and you want to be able to go around and and uh, see what you know students are working on so uh, are there whiteboard applications for that I you know there are some ways that we use whiteboards in the classroom that I don't know that I've got excellent tools for but um, what I wanted to do this afternoon is just uh, go through some options, um, kind of present them out to you. Uh, we'll have some time to play around with, uh, with some of the different options um, as we're going through this. Uh, I thought I would start with the whiteboard that's actually in Zoom because many of us are already working with Zoom. So Zoom has a whiteboard functionality. We'll start there. We'll talk about what it can do. We'll talk about some of its limitations. Um, and then uh, I want to look at basically two categories of whiteboards. One are there are kind of cloud-based, web-based whiteboard solutions that you can pull up alongside your Zoom session or, or use them asynchronously. And then there are just tons of whiteboard applications that you can get for mobile devices. Um, so I, I included in, in the registration a question about whether people had access to tablets. Um, many of you did, some of you didn't. Many of you didn't answer that because I didn't make it a required question for registration. Um, but 
the uh, mobile apps I'll be looking at, you can actually use on your phone as well. So many of us may not have tablets, but you know, most of us do have, um, do have smartphones. So let me go ahead and start. Um, I'm gonna share my screen very quickly, just to kind of look at the notes. Um, so again, we're gonna go in to look at Zoom first. Uh, and again, look at some of the tools that are available with the whiteboard in Zoom. I came across a, um, a recommendation for this site just recently. Oh, and Marie has put the, the uh, copied again the link for the, um, the notes for today into the chat, so you can always come back and follow along here. Um, I'm going to present whiteboard.fi. And if I is Finland, um, as uh, kind of an example of what you might look for in some of these cloud-based, browser-based options, and I'm going to look at it because it is it is about the lowest threshold application I have come across. It is just so easy to use, and it's got some things it can do. Obviously, it's got some some things it can't do. Got some links to other. Um, cloud-based, browser-based uh, whiteboards that you can look at. I use Explain Everything, or technically the Explain EDU for, uh, free version of it for a lot in my classes, and I wanted to spend some time going through it. But if you do have, um, if you do have a tablet, there are a lot of whiteboard apps that are available for your Android or iPad tablets. Um, if you are just thinking about using your smartphone, many of these are not um, are only you know available for tablets, but there are some whiteboard apps that you can do on your phone as well. Um, and then if we've got time, I'll talk about Notability, which is another app I use a lot. And I hadn't really thought about it from an instructional viewpoint because I think of it as a meeting note taking app, but there are some ways you can uh, think about using it. Uh, in for instruction so uh, you know again with zoom you can't really show what you're doing in zoom when you're hosting a zoom session which is why I've got this screen capture in here so uh, if you've run any zoom sessions and you have done any screen sharing you know that you have the ability to pull up specific application windows that are open when while you're running zoom or your whole desktop but there is, of course, this uh, option to pull up a whiteboard instead. And one thing that I hadn't used before but came across as I was preparing for this is um, the ability to uh, share your iPhone or iPad screen, uh, which I don't know if, uh, if, you, if any of you are going to get anything out of this workshop, but me coming across this feature is worth all of the work that I put into doing the workshop. So um, uh, just take it at that. So I stopped screen sharing so that I could start screen sharing again and bring up the, the whiteboard. And what I want to do is I'm going to bring up the whiteboard. And rather than having you all jump in right away, I'm going to, from my, I've got my Zoom session actually open on my laptop, which is what I'm talking to you over now. But I also have it up on my uh, iPad and my iPhone as well. And so I want to bring up the, the whiteboard uh, in Zoom, show you what it's like to use the tool, whiteboard tools from a, a desktop. And then also I will uh, come in um, and, and mark up the whiteboard with my, um, my tablet and my phone. So starting screen sharing, and this time I'm going to select whiteboard. And share it and so you should all see on your zoom session um, this blank canvas and uh, you know I find uh, I'm working on um, a MacBook so you know I don't have any it's got a touch pad I don't have any fancy um, stylus or anything attached to it I'm not using a mouse I've got the touchpad instead so obviously you can type some text onto the whiteboard. You can draw. 
um, with a pencil. And so you could theoretically, you know, do X uh, plus Y uh, equals 10. And you could draw a little graph, an X, Y plot, where you've got 10 out here and 10 on the y-axis here and clearly you know this function is a straight line between the two and so forth i find it i, I don't know how many of you find it natural or comfortable drawing with a mouse or a trackpad but i find it um it's doable hopefully you can read that that says x plus y equals 10. <laughs> Right, but I mean, Paul, is is this the kind of drawing that um, you would would suit your needs for kind of sketching out some of these psychological frameworks? Yeah, and I've I've seen people do it, and I guess I've just felt that very silly beginner's anxiety about yeah. trying it. Um, a very quick question yep. um, to show you how little I know about this. How did you get the pencil? Okay, so there is a text tool, there's a select tool, so I could, you know, select this little doodle that I put up here and I could move it around. Uh, there is the text tool, there is the drawing tool, and I just, you know, draw, drew, I selected a thin line, you could select a, a thicker line. Um, you I guess could, I, just, I don't see where you can select those tools for some reason. Oh, uh, of course, I am um, demonstrating Zoom in a Zoom session, so you're not actually seeing my floating palette that's above the top. So um, when you uh, are in, uh, you're all in as participants, so you probably just have the pencil available to you. And... Um, so I'm going to now switch over to my tablet. I'm looking at the whiteboard. I uh, you know, just touched on the screen so I can see the little pencil tool show up. And when I click on the pencil tool, I see a, a bunch of tools show up. So try clicking on the whiteboard on whatever device you're on. And um, Hopefully, you'll see a tool palette come up. I'm going to select a pen on my my iPad. I've got actually a stylus and Apple Pencil, so you know it's much easier to uh, draw more naturally with a stylus than with uh, I find than with the mouse or with a trackpad. Um, there are uh, stamp tools that will allow you to like um, select a heart stamp and you can put little hearts all over your um, whiteboard to indicate uh, or, or, or check marks. So if you've got students in your class who are putting stuff up and I see somebody wrote something here in the, in the middle, um, right there. And so you can, you know, put check marks uh, by, you know, things you want to star. You have a spotlight. We have a couple of options for spotlight. The easiest one to use is just this arrow that you can kind of pull around. And if you click, you know, I want you to, I want you to look there for now. And we're going to focus on that part of the screen. And down here, somebody's doing a fairly decent job of writing high with uh, the um, pencil tool um, and so forth. There's an eraser. So, you know, you can erase your stuff or you can erase, um, sorry for the person who wrote high, but you can, you know, erase things that are on the screen. There is a, uh, a trash can tool that as an instructor you can clear the whole screen you can clear all of your drawings and leave the drawings from the students up on here you can clear 
the viewers drawings or you can clear the whole screen if we put some more stuff on here uh, okay so this is again i'm i'm drawing with my my stylus on the ipad it's very kind of natural but if you don't have a um, a tablet and a stylus and but you've got the zoom window up in your phone you can um, let me just quick pull up my phone and select uh, you have a much limited tool set with the phone you've got basically pen highlighter and arrow so if I select the pen on my phone and I'm drawing with my finger now you know again it's maybe not quite as nice as if you've got a nice stylus but even I think drawing with your finger on your touch screen on your phone it's probably more natural for most of us than uh, using the mouse or the trackpad so if I wanted to write X um, let's select the pen again if I wanted to select X plus Y equals 10 with my finger uh, that was much quicker than what I did with the um, with the uh, touchpad on my on my MacBook. Okay. So, um, what are people's thoughts about the the whiteboard in Zoom? Before I say some things, and there's a nice save function here. You can um, click the save, and it'll capture a PNG file of whatever you and your students drew on the screen here. Maybe hey, Keith? Yep. Maria, I have two questions. One is, so I'm thinking in my marketing class, hey, I can you to fool around with drafting, you know, a sample message with a, a, a little graphic or something. But can students do individual whiteboards and then share them with us? Like, do you have any idea of that? No, or see, that, one that, that's that one limitation. Work on? Right, that's one limitation of the whiteboard in Zoom. There is just one space, and everyone is working on the same space. Um, okay. I mean, there, there might be, I, I don't know if there's a setting in Zoom where you can, you, you, there might be situations where you want to write on the whiteboard, but you don't necessarily want your students picking up a pen and scribbling on the whiteboard when you're right. doing your chalk talk. So I, I didn't actually have time before the workshop to look for that setting, but I suspect that it would not be unreasonable to, for that setting to exist. It would just be something I would need to confirm. Uh, but yeah, you've, the, you've got a limitation in that you've got the one whiteboard space. Um, you can't create multiple pages. You could okay. fill up a page, you could save a snapshot, hit the trash can to clear the whiteboard, and that would be your page two, but you can't really then go back to page one. So that's and, another limitation. And then very quickly, the stylus, which looked a lot easier and manageable, but you, that's where you have to have a tablet. Is that correct? And then it will come up. Yeah. Oh, I see that if you manually, ha okay. Thank you. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. So, I mean, when I was drawing on my phone, it was, you know, select, clicking on the pen and then drawing on the whiteboard with my fingertip mm -hmm. clearly my fingertip is not as precise as the tip of the stylus right but it's still a lot uh, more natural to scribble with your finger than it is to um, try to maneuver things uh, by using a mouse or trackpad so Anything Some when you say tablet, it's it's any computer type situation with with a um, touch face surface, right? right. Like I yeah. have a Microsoft Pro, so if I have a stylus for that, I can use it. Yeah. So um, if you're if you're going to run a whiteboard in in Zoom in your Zoom session, and and you're running that off of your computer or your or your laptop, because that's you know where you you've got your settings set up. There's nothing that prevents you from coming in on a second device. I see. And so clearly I'm, I'm in here on three devices. I'm actually, I actually have my iPad and my iPhone logged into my purchase account. 
And so they show up in the participants list as uh, Keith Landa iPhone and Keith Landa um, iPad. And I am in the main Zoom session with our um, off-campus account that we set up our uh, Zoom session, our Zoom account for, for the TLTC. Uh, but theoretically, I could be logged in um, on all three devices with my purchase account. And so you, you um, probably want to um, you know, be running your Zoom session off of your computer or your, or your laptop so that you know, it makes it easy to record to your computer if you're recording the session and saving the chat and you know, making it easier to pop over to a browser if you want to you know, pull up, um, um, you know, put, drop links in the chat and so forth, but have that um, that touch-friendly device in as a second device, so that when you do go um, to the um, to the whiteboard, um, you can you know draw on that whiteboard much more naturally. You activate it through that other device, not yeah. through the first one. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could make. Um, you could make yourself host on all three devices. I think there's no problem with doing that. Um, I guess just one other thing I would say about the whiteboard in Zoom, in addition to, oh, wait a minute, let's actually select the whiteboard. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and clear this. I'm going to clear all the drawings. And I want everyone to use the text tool and just type a short little bit of text um, onto the screen, maybe um, in, a, in a couple of words, uh, what, your, what your biggest interest on using whiteboards is. Just type them anywhere on the screen. Okay, so someone there said chalk talk. Drawing demos. The reason I'm having you do this is that one application I thought of as I was putting together this workshop is to kind of replicate the sticky note brainstorming that we might do at the board in the classroom. So I you know, there are times when I would have students, you know, kind of come up with brainstorming ideas uh, on, or, or we would do this oftentimes in, um, in workshops where, you know, we're getting faculty to think about um, pedagogical uh, approaches that they want, draw, uh, you know, make little notes of, uh, of these ideas, you know, go up to the board, stick them on the board, and then have everyone look at those, and then, with the sticky notes, you can kind of rearrange and group. And so I could select here, and here we've got a collaboration. Here we've got, um, you know, you could, you know, here we've got two people talking about Chalk Talk, so we can take those sticky notes and kind of bring them together. And so the whiteboard could be a way you know, just using text to have uh, students brainstorm and, um, uh, and not have to worry about, oh, can I, can I draw well enough on here? Okay, so those are some, some I, I, I think the main advantage of the whiteboard in Zoom is that it's in Zoom, right? And many of us are using Zoom for our classes anywhere, anyway, so it is, a, is it an application that is just there um, for us to use. Um, but as we talked about, it does have this limitation. I could, uh, you know, save um, the, a, a picture of the whiteboard as it is now here. This is now probably page two of our whiteboard session. And I can clear all the drawings. And then we've got, you know, page three where we can, can work. 
So uh, what I want to turn to now is uh, just a very quick demonstration of this um, um, whiteboard site. Please, can I ask a quick question? Sure. Sorry. No, that's okay. Um, is, can you have white, whiteboards in, within a breakout session? Like could students have their you own know, whiteboards? Right. I was, well, um, I'm going to create two rooms and um, automatically position you to that room and uh, let you go in to the rooms. I suspect not, but I didn't have actually a chance to check that out before we So actually, uh, I'm now in room one, and um, I see a share screen, and I can do a whiteboard share screen, but I'm in as host. So those of you who are in this breakout room should have um, a um, whiteboard available to you. I'm going to stop that sharing. I'm going to bring everyone back to the main rooms. So um, when I went into room one as host, I had the ability to set up a, a whiteboard uh, screen sharing. Um, I didn't go into room two as non-host, but I think if you uh, want to do that, you probably need to make sure that you've got someone going into each of the breakout rooms who has host or co-host um, capabilities so that they can actually start screen sharing. And as long as, uh, as, long as they can start screen sharing, then um, you have the ability to um, share a whiteboard just as you could share anything else. Okay. So I, I think we've got everyone back now. Uh, so I was just commenting that um, it looks like if you've got someone who's in the room, at least as a um, host or co-host, certainly you can do that. What I would want to test is uh, the Yeah, we tried to handle it. With I don't it think anyone office. in our group would, yeah. yeah. I don't think any of us were hosts. Yeah. OK, so group, in, in room two, you were able to bring up a whiteboard as well. Yep. OK, so no, no need to bring in a host then. So that's great. You can, um, you can, uh, break up your class into groups, send them off to the breakout rooms, have them use the whiteboard to do brainstorming or whatever, and probably you want them to make sure that they um, save a um, snapshot of the break of the whiteboard before the breakout rooms finish up. Okay. So um, let me share my uh, screen again. And um, come over here and talk about the next uh, set of solutions, these cloud-based, browser-based uh, whiteboard options. So again, um, this is not necessarily the end-all, be-all one. This is just one that came across some of my um, listserv discussions recently. And uh, again, I like it for its, its, its simplicity. It's uh, whiteboard.fi. And I'll just go to it in the browser here. Uh, it is geared toward uh, K through 20 um, education, but uh, clearly a lot of use in K through 12. This, this actually is started out as a personal pet project by someone who had an IT background and was teaching in K through 12 who wanted a uh, kind of a whiteboard situation. I've, I've come here, there's um, 
there's no place to set up an account. There's no need to download anything. You as the instructor just click create new. And I'm going to, you know, put my name on it. Um, I'm not going to enable a, a lobby or anything like that. Um, I'm going to allow students to come in to upload images. And you click create new class. And um, basically, all you have to do is provide this URL, which I will put into the chat. And if if everyone um, either just goes to whiteboard.fi and types in the D8KPU code, then um, you will automatically get your own whiteboard created. And so let me actually uh, do that on my other devices. So I'm taking my, my tablet to whiteboard.fi. There is this join button. I click on join and enter the room code, which is D8 K P U. And don't capitalize that D, please. Uh, sometimes autocorrect is not your friend. And so what you see is, um, Every student who joins your class has their whiteboard, and you as the instructor have your whiteboard. And so you can assign your students to, you know, do work out a problem or um, sketch out uh, their understanding of the Krebs cycle. You know, and so you can have the students, you know, draw the intermediate uh, compounds in the Krebs cycle and what leads to, you know, what other thing. You can have students, I mean, they're pretty rudimentary tools, but I will just point out a couple of things here. I'll, um, um, I will show my whiteboard and then, um, I see author already, author already added a grid. There are some actions you can do here. You can set up some things on your whiteboard and push your whiteboard out to all the student whiteboards. So if I wanted to put something on the whiteboard here on mine and um, push that out to all of you, then if I look at your whiteboards, um, you're all starting with a whiteboard situation where I have pre-set up some things, and then I'm I'm asking you to um, to um, respond to or or work on the problem or uh, you know draw the uh, reaction or whatever. Um, so there's that. Uh, I gave students the ability to upload images, and so somebody, that looks like a Krebs cycle. Um, there is uh, the option here under um, actions to insert math uh, formulas, and so um, if uh, you know you are interested in play in in um, you know using math formulas, you you might be uh, someone who is uh, familiar with uh, LaTeX coding um, to you know write those uh, uh, math formulas, and then those 
Um, those get added into your uh, whiteboard as a an image that you can you know shrink or or enlarge. You can move around wherever you want it to be. Uh, so um, this you know this is a nice situation where um, you want the students to have their own individual. whiteboard, scribble space, whatever you want them to do, and you as the instructor um, have, I mean, you're all just seeing your own individual whiteboards. If you pop back into the Zoom session so you can see what I'm sharing, you'll see that um, as the instructor, I can see what's going on with each individual student's board. And so uh, Keith iPad is, uh, you know, what, I'm not sure why this equation is so popular, but it keeps showing up again and again. And he is plotting, um, plotting that equation. There are some uh, actions that you can take um, where um, you have the ability to, um, you know, if I, if I uh, were giving students some time to work on something and then I have the ability to save all of the whiteboards that the students have worked on as a PDF document and I can include mine and click save as PDF. Now I have captured um, um, all of the student whiteboards as well as the teacher whiteboard from the current class session. Okay. So if you're if you're not in if you're not at uh, whiteboard.fi, but if you're in the Zoom session watching the screen share, you'll see that um, you know I, I saved a document here that has captured everything that the students have worked on in um, in their individual spaces. I come back over here. I have um, I have just saved everyone's whiteboard to a PDF. So now I feel uh, less guilty if I click the clear all whiteboards option as instructor, and all of your whiteboards are reset to you know ground zero. Again, maybe I have set something else up on my instructor whiteboard, and I want to push a, a second. Um, a second thing out to the class for you to work on, and then you have the ability to use the whiteboard tools to, you know, do whatever I have um, requested you to work on. Okay. So uh, this is just an example of what uh, some of these cloud-based, web-based whiteboard tools can look like. Again, I like this one because it is just uh, such a low threshold uh, application. You basically don't need anything but a web browser. Um, you can quickly set up a room. You can send out the link to your students, have them join your room with the room code, and you can all scribble away. It's ephemeral. You know, nothing gets saved other than the PDFs that you are capturing from here. So you have no account. You don't come back and log into your account later and look at your past whiteboards. It is, it's here, it's a tool to use, and then it's, it's um, gone unless you've, uh, unless you've saved the whiteboards. I think the one limitation here is that um, Emily can't show the class her whiteboard. I don't know that there's any way to do that. So that is one limitation. There's also a limitation in that you can't have, you know, uh, three students in a team collaborate on a whiteboard. Okay. Um, so uh, there are just a couple of others that, and, and this is not an exhaustive list, but if um, you know running one of these web-based whiteboards alongside Zoom um, uh, might be useful for your synchronous sessions. I, yeah, I think um, whiteboard.fi certainly is really just geared at synchronous activities. 
you're, you've got your students all together in the classroom. Your, your classroom does not persist over time, so there's not, you know, can't set something up for students to come in tomorrow and work on. It is really just strictly asynchronous. There are these other tools as well. Um, I'll just pop them up quickly. AWW is a web whiteboard. Um, you know, there is the free version and there's the paid version. If you just click on start drawing, you're in the free version. You have basically all of these different tools. And then you have the ability to uh, invite people to your whiteboard by just copying the link. Um, so this would be more along the lines of the Zoom whiteboard space in that it's a, it's a web-based whiteboard and you're inviting everyone to come in and um, work on the same space. But you have the ability with this whiteboard to um, have multiple pages if you register. Um, which I haven't taken the time to actually sign up for a free account, let alone signing up for the premium account. You can export your boards and uh, so forth. This board is temporary because we're all just, I'm just in here, um, you know, clicking on the try it now kind of button. Uh, white board without an H. Um, basically is even simpler. You just start drawing anywhere. You can have this very simplified tool palette, but again, there's the ability to share it. Um, you copy a, a link to the clipboard, send that link out to people, to collaborators, and they can come in here. Um, Stormboard is a little bit higher end. And uh, what you start getting into is the corporate team collaboration tools at some point. And Stormboard kind of straddles the, the um, divide there. I do know that the, a lot of educators do use Stormboard, but you're, we're beginning to get into the you know, enterprise um, team collaboration tool set here. Okay, let me uh, quickly stop sharing, ask if there are any questions about uh, these kind of web-based uh, uh, opportunities. Uh, do any of these have like a um, screencast, uh, like, uh, like ca screen capture for recording? Um, for those, uh, I mean, there might be some web-based whiteboards that have that. I haven't uh, seen it in the ones I've come across so far. Uh, but most of the mobile device-based uh, whiteboard apps will have uh, screen recording. And so I think at this point I want to switch over and um, show you um, explain everything, which is my go-to whiteboard application. And for this, I'm going to use the um, Zoom share screen option that I just came across for the workshop today. I'm going to share my iPad. And this um, this works over um, AirPlay, which you should all be seeing my um, my iPad home screen now, right? Yep, we see it. Great. And so uh, let me just pull up, explain everything. Um, uh, I've used Explain Everything for, oh, I don't, go, don't know, well over a decade now, uh, back when I bought the original app for $1.99. Uh, if you do a search on either Google Play or the App Store these days, what you will find is a subscription-based Explain Everything that I don't know what it costs you, like 10 or $15 a month. Uh, which is not what I use, but they still have maintained and explained everything or uh, 
if you just search for explain edu in the app store or google play you'll find essentially the education version of explain everything and this is a a uh, one of the whiteboard apps and so uh, there are a ton of whiteboard apps uh, if you have um, you know, a smartphone, you can find uh, various kinds of whiteboard apps. You won't find Explain um, Everything or some of the other whiteboard apps that I've got in the notes here. But if you've got an Android tablet or if you've got an iPad uh, and go to the respective app store and do, um, you know, search for whiteboard applications, apps, you'll find a, a wider range. Things you want to look for is, you know, how do the drawing tools work? Um, in my, um, for my purposes, I uh, really uh, am using it mostly to do uh, lecture capture recordings. And so I want the ability to import my slide decks into the uh, whiteboard app. And then, um, you know, obviously you want the ability to do the recording and then you need to look at export options as well. Um, some of the whiteboard apps will only let you export the uh, recorded video of your screencast to specific uh, areas. I like explain everything because, um, you know, I can, I can import my slides or I can just pull up a blank white uh, board if I'm going to do a chalk talk and I've got um, nice annotation tools and recording tools um, and then when I'm done I can um, export the recording as a video to my YouTube account I can decide whether I'm going to make it um, public or unlisted, either way I can embed that YouTube recording in my Moodle course and make it available to my students. So here I'm, um, again you should be seeing my, um, you should be seeing my uh, home screen for Explain Everything, right Marie? Yes. Okay, because, oh, I can see that on my phone, actually, I can confirm. So if I do um, a new project, I can start with a blank canvas, or I can go to uh, uh, my files area. I've got explain everything. Um, it talks with my Dropbox account. So I can take my I can take my Google, draw, um, my Google Doc presentations in Google Slides, save them as a, um, a PDF of, so I've got the PDFs of the slides, and save that to my Dropbox account, pull those slides into, a, um, into an explain everything presentation, or I can just start with a blank canvas. Um, I, I guess I'll show the, the import. So, Let's go back to my geology course and look for um, presentations from last fall. And um, you know, here is um, here's some slides on mineral classifications. I can select that that slide deck, that PDF uh, from my Dropbox account, and import it. And uh, maybe I uh, for the interest of our workshop here, I will um, not bother importing all of these slides. Uh, you have the ability to um, import your slides as separate pages in your Explain Everything presentation, um, or you can tile them onto a single page, which is not so useful if you've got you know, 20 slides you want to talk about. Um, I click insert and it creates a, um, it brings all of, all of my slides in. I've got um, a whole suite of tools that you see here along the side. You've got different kinds of markers. 
uh, marker, highlighter, you've got an eraser, you've got uh, color palettes, you can put shapes on, um, you can add text, you can um, you know erase things, you can use a laser pointer as you're talking. Uh, so it would be easy enough um, I mean, you could use this live in your Zoom sessions, this or any other kind of whiteboard. You've got your presentation slides in the whiteboard. Um, you're broadcasting your tablet through um, the uh, Zoom session, and uh, you could you know, talk about whatever you wanna talk about. Let's get a different color here. And again, I'm working with my uh, stylus on my tablet so it's a little bit nicer to draw than with a trackpad um, but uh, for, for your question about screencasting um, you've got a record button and you can record just uh, your device uh, audio or you could theoretically put your little talking head on the um, on the recording as well. Um, I tend to find that for presenting uh, lessons the way that you would see them, for example, at Khan Academy, having the talking head view at that point does not add much. It's more important for them to be able to hear you and see what you're writing on the screen. Um, so, uh, what I recommend is you could just hit record and I'm recording what I'm talking about right now. And so I've got this kind of messy slide looking at um, the oxide class of minerals. So these are um, typically a, a metal ion with, oxy with an uh, uh, oxygen in the mineral formation. So clearly, you know, a magnetite, which is an iron oxide, corundum, which is an aluminum oxide, um, hematite, another iron oxide. Oxides, generally speaking, tend to be important sources of, um, or important ores for, for uh, various metals. When I'm doing this kind of recording, uh, I tend to, stop uh, the recording before I go on to the next slide, and then start the recording again. It, it, in the past, I've had issues with, if I'm just recording, you know, from one slide to the next to the next, um, the audio can sometimes, um, I, I've had issues with the audio in the past. So I would, you know, hit record, talk about um, whatever I want to talk about with the sulfides, uh, you know, galena is a really interesting um, mineral sample to have in the lab because it is just incredibly dense and heavy. Um, you know, you can uh, you can um, edit your audio recordings to some extent. You can you know cut pieces out. Um, you have access to the audio track. I generally don't worry about you know getting fancy with my audio recordings and then you know just go on from, from slide to slide to slide. Um, so again you could, uh, I've done this where I've used to explain everything um, in the classroom and I you know lecture from my tablet in the classroom so that I can walk around but I also have immediate you know, lecture capture of what I've done in the classroom. So that would be kind of a synchronous lecturing, but being able to record it so I can save it for later. But clearly, I could instead for my remote class, um, figure out what I want to say about all of these slides, do the recordings uh, ahead of time, this summer even, if I, you know, have my act together, um, save that, um, recorded lecture, but then here um, I have the ability to export the video and I can send it to my YouTube account. And I'm going to let 
explain.edu, talk to my Google account so that you know they're all fine with doing that. Put in a title. Um, you can um, put in a description, you can specify the category. If you don't want your lectures to be public, you can put them up on YouTube as unlisted. Or you can send this recorded lecture somewhere else to your box.net account or your Dropbox account and figure out how you want to share it with your students you know, without using your YouTube account. With the unlisted um, setting on the upload here to YouTube. No one can find this unless I give them the link. And the only the only one I'm going to give the link to basically is my is the page that I'm putting together in my Moodle course so that the video can be embedded um, there. I actually won't click publish to take the time to do that during the workshop here, but basically that's um, you know, that's pretty much all you would need to do. Um, let me stop sharing my iPad. And again, uh, I explained at edu, I could have pulled that up on my phone and done the same kind of thing, imported. Um, oh, actually, let me go back. If you wanted to do just do a chalk talk kind of presentation, I'm going to share my iPad again. and set up, uh, start uh, screen mirroring on my tablet and go back into explain.edu. If I did just a blank canvas instead, uh, you know, I could add as many pages as I want to this uh, canvas, go back to any of the pages I want to go to and uh, you know, just pull up a pen, get rid of that, um, and hit record. And then I can start talking about, OK, so, so Paul, you're talking about different psychological frameworks. I don't know what frameworks you're going to be talking about or what kind of sketches you're going to be making. But uh, this is probably a lot easier canvas to do this kind of recording on. And again, you could do it on your phone if you don't have a tablet. Um, and you could, uh, because you're capturing the recording, you can um, you know, save that recording. You can put it up wherever you need to put it up to get your access to, it, your, to your students. Or um, depending on what tablet you have, you might be able to pump it straight through the Zoom session like I'm doing right now and um, you know, have your Chalk Talk screen uh, available up and running in your uh, Zoom screen share so that you can walk your students through the different frameworks that you want to walk them through. Okay. Stop recording. I'm going to stop that screen share. Uh, I'm just going to quickly share my desktop again so I can go back to the notes document for the session today. There are, uh, like I say, a, a lot of whiteboard apps. Um, we don't really have time because I'm already uh, right at the end of time to go through any of these other ones, but um, Edu Creations is a very popular education whiteboard, as is Show Me. Both of these um, will have apps that you can download. Um, EduCreations and Doceri are only for your tablet, though, not for your phone. Not sure about Show Me. But one interesting thing about Show Me is that in the case of the screen sharing here, um, there's basically an online community where instructors, a lot of K-12, but some higher ed, uh, have created their different, you know, show me presentations and, you know, we'll upload them here for, for sharing. Again, a lot of this is at the K-12, uh, K-12 level, but uh, there's no reason why 
you know, I, and, and there might be actually a way to filter by, uh, by grade level to look for those that are more geared toward, toward higher ed. So that's kind of an interesting feature about Show Me. I will just mention that um, Google and Microsoft are getting into this space. Again, a lot of this is, is geared toward the enterprise level team collaboration tool set. And both Google and Microsoft will be very happy to sell your, uh, your business, um, you know, $5,000 touch screen things to put in your conference room to work with the uh, Jamboard or Microsoft whiteboard app on your phone or on your tablet. But you don't have to have that. You could download, you could download the Microsoft whiteboard app to your, to your phone and you can actually sign into it using your purchase account which is what I did earlier today and create a whiteboard and then you can actually use you could actually then use the purchase um, address book to invite people to collaborate and so Maria is going to check this out with you at some point I could I can open up the whiteboard app on my phone create uh, the Microsoft whiteboard app log in with my purchase account and then I wanted to see, but I didn't have time to check out before the workshop, what happens if I invite you as a collaborator. Um, I won't take the time to look at Notability today. It's not technically a whiteboard. It's a note-taking uh, note note app. But um, it does have some interesting features for instruction. And I actually have agreed to give a half-hour session on using Notability for instruction as part of the SUNY Remote Teaching Institute. There are going to be another series of webinars coming up in um, August, in the week of August 10th through the 14th. August 12th are all going to be uh, webinars about different uh, teaching tools, and I'm scheduled, I think, for like 1030 on August 12th to do a half hour presentation on notability. But with that, um, I'll stop sharing and um, see if there are any questions. Again, um, you've got lots of different options for whiteboards, and some of them have, are better suited for different purposes. Um, if what is available in Zoom as whiteboard meets your needs, then that's the easiest to do because we're all using Zoom these days for our classes. But going beyond Zoom, there's essentially the web-based, browser-based whiteboard applications that you can check out. And there are the mobile app-based whiteboard apps that um, have their own strengths um, as well. Um, so I'll stop babbling at that point and see if there are any questions. Okay. So uh, if you've got questions down the road, obviously um, email them to us at tltc at uh, purchase.edu. Again, um, Marie is running the Moodle office hours sessions every Monday and Thursday afternoon from 2 to 4. So you can find uh, information about those on our website and drop in and talk with Marie or ask me to drop into the session. We can crash Marie's session to talk about teaching and tech tools as well. Okay. So with that, I will stop the recording.